Good morning, Victory Life Church, and all you wonderful people tuning in to another session of Thought Control. Thought of calling it something different, but because I'm talking so much about the Holy Spirit who uh, was sent to us. But uh, without the Holy Spirit, you're going to just be into positive thinking and trying your best to drum up thoughts that are positive versus negative. And again, there's nothing wrong with thinking good things, but uh, there's a higher call that the Holy Spirit has, a higher way of doing things, a higher way of thinking, and he's thinking on God's terms. And so every scripture that we covered in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses um, 3 to 16, it talks about the Holy Spirit is searching. Remember I had last week, I had the Holy Spirit searching the very deep things of God. And uh, so I picture that, you know, let's say this was God. He's around there. He is searching and searching and searching God. And he wants to reveal it to you. And so let's just quickly go to this one scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 2, verses um, 12. It says, For we have received the Spirit, not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand. Again, there we go. It's a thought control or uh, controlled thoughts by the Holy Spirit. And uh, again, we get to think those thoughts that are his thoughts versus the world's thoughts versus the, uh, our own thoughts. So the Holy Spirit wants to reveal that we may understand what has been freely given to us by God. And it is so good to understand the things that are given to us by God. And so he, see, we can't do it without the Holy Spirit. We can't have thought control without understanding the ways of the Spirit where he searches the very things of God uh, to reveal them to us. And to further illustrate that, um, it goes to show us what, you know, Jesus was sent to do the work of the cross, and he did. He did a marvelous job. Then he sent the Holy Spirit, and it says in 1 John chapter 14, verse 26, but the Comforter, the Counselor, the Helper, the Intercessor, the Advocate, the Strengthener, the Standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, says that because Jesus had to go, right? So the Spirit could come. Now, why would he come? He will teach, teach, teach you all things. So would you want to have thoughts without the teaching of the Holy Spirit? No, I want my mind flooded with God thoughts. What about just the Bible, end times, um, you know, where creation, where it all came from, all that kind of stuff? No, it's, it's the whole. He will lead and guide you into all truth. Folks, we need to understand the Holy Spirit is involved with everything. Your financial decisions, your vacation decisions, every part of your life the Holy Spirit is in, in uh, you know, bringing you thoughts and bringing you what, you what what is good to think on. And let me finish this verse here. It says, He will teach you all things, and He will cause you to recall, says the Amplified, will remind, remind. So recall, remind, He will teach. All of those are in your thought realm, but the Holy Spirit brings us those thoughts, right? Remind you of and bring you re your remembrance of everything I have told you. So thank God for that. We need that in these times. You know, did you know I got asked to leave a certain church twice in one week? It was kind of funny. I was, got asked to leave because I got fired up for the things of God. And they, they uh, wanted me to leave. <laughs> Interesting. But uh, that's okay. And lately I've been listening to a lot of testimonies from the healing school that we're going through from a, a great uh, teacher. And I, I recommend you find him online, Andrew. Womack and go through his healing school. And there I find that uh, they have testimony after testimony. They have so many testimonies. And what is, you know, great of uh, testimonies of healing and that. But what intrigues me with every one of those testimonies is that the people were so stooped in religion. They were going to, some going, were going to churches and, and their teacher or pastor was saying, it's God's will that your child has cancer. It's God's will that you have this big growth on you, or it's God's will that, uh, uh, um, you know, that your child is, uh, is, uh, has, is a paraplegic or whatever. And it was just like, it never sat right with the people. What was that? The Holy Spirit finally got them over into 
the right teaching of the Word of God, and they recognize, wait a minute, something is wrong here. And you can be so entrenched and indoctrinated by religion that is keeping you in bondage. God never makes people sick. God has healed everyone. God has saved everybody. They just got to call on the name of the Lord to fulfill that transaction. God has healed everybody through the stripes of Jesus. And I, I, I sat there with tears in my eyes almost when I heard these people. They couldn't believe that God was so good at first. But then the, the Holy Spirit re reminded them, do you think that the Jesus walks through these hospitals and is satisfied with the sickness of all these children? That, yeah, that's my plan to give him cancer, my plan to have an amputation for that child, my plan to take that child and put him in the choir. No, that's stinking thinking, that's stinking religion. It's demonic. It is wrong. Every wrong teaching is wrong. I don't care if it comes from uh, the occult or if it's stinking religion. It's wrong and it hurts people. And I was so blessed to see these people set free and see their babies come back to life. One baby only had half a heart and uh, they, they stood on the word of God and uh, listened to Andrew's teaching and on um, healing that you have it all. And it changed their thinking. The Holy Spirit, you know, reminded them of the rest of the word through the teaching of one man. And uh, they, their child was set free and they were set free and they fell in love with and thanked God for his goodness. So I'm going to bring you the truth of God's word. And uh, so the Holy Spirit wants to be involved with everything. He's a, your, remember, I just read it. He's your teacher. He will remind you. He'll call you to recall. And he will bring things back to remember. Watch this here. Because we're so needed right now. Peace, I leave you. My own peace. Well, how is that done? By the Holy Spirit reminding you what Jesus did to give you peace during the most troubled times that I've experienced in 62 years of my life. He says, uh, my own peace I now give uh, you, not as the world gives, do I give it to you. Uh, so do not let your hearts be troubled, and neither let them be afraid. If there's ever a time where the Bible says in the last days, men's hearts will fail them because of fear. Now that's not God's will for you. Not as a believer. He says, do not let your heart be troubled. And he will give you the rest of the Bible as the Holy Spirit brings thoughts from, as he searches out the will of God and he reveals it to your mind. He will show you how not to be troubled during these times. Do not let your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed and do not permit yourself to be fearful and intimidated uh, and cowards and unsettled boy if any word is necessary for today this again is john chapter 14 verse 26 verse 27 so here's the bottom line jesus left jesus says my peace i give you now the revealer the holy spirit is there to lead and guide you into all truth so that you can not be intimidated, not be fearful, not be agitated, not be full of fear. He will give you the thoughts. He will, I mean, the Bible says in Psalm 91, the thousand will fall on one side, 10,000 the other, but it will not come near you. It, read Psalm 91. There's a lot of trouble that's going on. And somehow, through it all, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you not just biblical truth. That's great. That's number one. He's searching out the things of God. But he will show you, as I've given this example before, um, a one uh, Russian evangelist once told me, I, it was when we started going to some of these full gospel meetings, what a joy it was to be able to attend, to hear truth from the Word of God. And the speaker uh, me mentioned that day, he says, we, I, he remembered, he recalled the times that they were in Russia and the KGB, who was against churches and meetings would come in to the very room that they were in and they would say there is nobody in this room and they would leave while the whole room was filled with people how is that possible and the holy spirit will lead and guide you and lead and guide you know meetings and in fact there was a, i remember another time 
um, the church would not put out any bulletins so that the KGB couldn't show up. So what did they do? They said, if you want to attend church next week, you're going to have to pick it up by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, guess what? They Everybody showed up except for one person. You know why? Because the one person was a KGB spy. And so everybody heard from the Spirit of God. That's what the Spirit of God does. He's involved with every aspect in every day of our lives. And so thank God for that. So see, we can't do thought control without the Holy Spirit. He reminds us of the things of God. And then I had you over in Romans chapter 12, one of the scriptures, and we want to spend some time here again. And uh, this scripture is so taken out of context and has hurt so many people that I just love busting it apart because it's not what the Bible says. Only the Bible sets you true. And only what the Spirit of God reveals to you and brings back to your thoughts is what's going to set you free. Here's the scripture that we took last week. And we know all things work together for good of them that love God and are called according to His purpose. Well, uh, people take that out of its setting, out it comes, and uh, they say, see, that means every car wreck, everything... You know, and I'll, I'll go to some of the scary things like rape or incest or something like that. You cannot use this verse and say, this worked out for my good. Now, God will fix it, but it was never meant or, or brought by God on the scene. They don't in heaven plan. Let's plan for some incest here. Let's plan for some rape here. No, a thousand times no. Get with the program, go serve the right God, and he will reveal truth to you that that is never the Spirit of God. So all things do not work out. That's not the context of this chapter. All things, let's say you get in a car wreck or let's say something terrible like that has happened to you, the Holy Spirit will mend, he will repair. We are some wonderful speakers that uh, one lady, she was... Uh, uh, constantly molested by her father. She finally forgave him. It took a long time, but you know, it, 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 so God repairs. Let's put it that way. But in this setting, watch this here. It says, uh, all things, and I'm, this is the way it should read, uh, all things that the Spirit does. So let's find out what the Spirit does. We already know He reveals all truth. And let's go back in verse 26. It says, the Spirit helps our infirmities. The better translation is, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. So when you feel weak, oh, I feel so weak this morning, whatever it might be. Maybe maybe the Word isn't uh, alive in you this morning, or maybe you got fired and you feel weak and overcome by life or whatever, or, some, or whatever I read out of John chapter 14. The bottom line is the Spirit of God is there to help. So let's trust that He is helping in that, and He's going to give you the thoughts that are contrary to or will help you in your weakness. I don't know what that might be, but in every situation, He wants you to be full of strength. And, uh, okay, what else does the Spirit of God do? Well, we'll go back to verse 16. The Spirit of Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Um, and if, not, if, if we are children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So the Spirit of God is going to lead you in your thought life, that, hey, you are a child of God. Because the devil's going to come and say, well, did you really did you really mean that prayer of salvation? Are you really a child of God? If you were, then you wouldn't have these troubles. Well, if anybody ever was a child of God and had trouble, it was the Apostle Paul, in and out of jail, in and out of shipwrecks, in and out of situations. But he knew in whom he had believed and that he was able to deliver him. And so the Spirit wants to make sure that you know that you're a child of God. And if you're a child, then you're an heir. So he's going to lead you into heir scriptures heir, your joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Go back to 1 John, uh, no, just regular John, John chapter 1, and it talks about the blessings we receive, the favor, and the goodness, and the gifts that we receive from God. And, and then it talks about you being heirs of Him. You have inherited His name. So that's a whole other study. The Spirit of God will always lead you into that truth. You are an heir, and if you are an heir of God, your joint heirs with Christ, the anointed one. So you're in the body of Christ. He's going to give you body scriptures of how you are hooked into the body of Christ and how the anointing is a part of your life. That is, you know, you may have the gift of prophecy. You may have the gift of tongues and interpretation. Um, you, you know, we all can lay hands on the sick. We all have the ministry of reconciliation. But he will show you or you're joint to the anointing. And so those are the things I'm going to fill my mind with. 
I am called, I'm separated, I'm part of the body of Christ. And of course, when you think, um, um, the Bible is clear, you are what you eat. And so I want to fill myself with those scriptures that will lead me into all truth. Here's another one. It says, but if you are through the spirit, you do mortify the deeds of the flesh. So what does the spirit do? Um, but I'll read it again in another translation. But if by the power of the spirit, you put to an end the evil habits of the body and you shall live. So the, again, see, it's not us working hard and scrubbing ourselves clean. The spirit comes in and he, 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 the Bible says, mortifies the deeds of the flesh. So you're going to have good thoughts of, uh, you know, uh, of the things that need to be mortified in your flesh. Why? He's going to, because the wages of sin are death. So he's going to show you good thoughts of what you should be doing. What else is there? It says um, in verse 9, it says, But if you are not, but you are not of the flesh, but you are of the spirit, so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Well, can you picture yourself full of the Holy Ghost and power? Those are the thoughts that he wants permeating your mind. He dwells in you. We know in Romans 5.5 5, that love of God is shed abroad from corner to corner by the Holy Spirit. Shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. There is wall, You are wall-to-wall -wall love. You're, why would I want to know that? Because faith works by love. And so we don't want to fail or have anything not come that's already freely given to us because we are uh, not uh, walking in love. <clears throat> and so the Holy Spirit lets us know He dwells in there. Go like this here. He dwells in me. He dwells in me. And I'm free from stinking thinking, negative thinking, everything else, because I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit. I, number one, you got to believe that He dwells in you. And so He gets the okay to, okay, now reveal things to the mind. And the mind will think on good things that will set you free. And uh, verse 3 of Romans chapter 8 says, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and, uh, and uh, for sin, condemning sin in the flesh. So thank God that Jesus, the son, was sent and he did the work. Then he left and the Holy Spirit came to complete the work or show us uh, what, the, what, the, what was the work that, the Spirit, that Jesus did. He's a revealer. Everything was complete in Jesus. He is the revealer of everything that was done. So get excited. Everything comes by you saying, thank you, Holy Spirit, for filling me. Um, you're helping me in my infirmities. You're helping me with my thoughts. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, please read that. Please read John 14, verse 26 to 27. And I'm going to finish uh, with this wonderful chapter. So after... I, as I just explained to you, all things, let's go back to verse, uh, and we know the, no, no, I don't want that one. It says, uh, where is it now? It is verse, verse, verse. I am in Romans 8, yes. There we go. For all things work together for them that are, uh, um, and again, it's what the Spirit, all things that the Spirit is doing, that works together for our good. So to the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and bears us up in our weakness, for we do not know what we ought to pray for and how uh, to offer in worship as we ought. So again, even if we don't know how to worship, don't you know how to worship today? Guess what? The Spirit aids us and helps us. He just constantly wants to fill your mind with songs, songs to sing, psalms to sing. Why would He want to do that? Because it lifts your spirit, man. You know, as I shared weeks ago, I have all these pages that I enjoy reading every morning over my life. And those are the thoughts that the Spirit of God wants to bring to my mind. Well, I don't have time to finish the rest of Romans chapter 8, but it's so important for you to understand that this, all the wonderful verses of who you are in Christ, that you are called. Jesus said you're, he's the firstborn of many brethren. So don't ever go back and say, you know, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. No, the Bible says now. Are you the sons of God? Let the Holy Spirit reveal that one to you. And I got, I got to finish with this. I'm just going to read it, but I want you to stir yourself up. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. <clears throat> Yet amidst of all these things, we are more than conquerors. Whatever's going on in your life right now, 
I want you to get conquer minded, conqueror minded, and gain a su surpassing victory through him who loved us. For I am persuaded beyond doubt and am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things impending or threatening, so anything thre threatening you today, nor things to come, <clears throat> nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able, able to separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So that should uh, give you some confidence. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit will lead you according to those scriptures that nothing's going to upset your apple cart. Even if it tries, even if the regulations say this, or even if the government says that, the bottom line is you have the Holy Spirit who will lead and guide you into all truth. And so I don't have time to expound into all of that today, but be assured. Read that for yourself and say, Holy Spirit, I don't understand how this situation is going to work out, but I have you on the inside and you will lead and guide me into all truth. You are the one that works, that all things work out for the good of them that love the Lord. You're the one that has all the equipment in Romans chapter 8, all those different things that, that I presented in this to make all things work out for the good of them that love God. Anyways, that's all the time I have. Give us a call at 250-862-3044. We'd love to pray with you or share more of the gospel with you. And, um, and anyways, have an amazing, wonderful day.